What's up, boys? Fuck. So, today I kind of wanted to go over a couple quick things. I was recently asked by, I'm not sure if he was a subscriber or just somebody passing through. Essentially, he asked, how do I select magazines for my firearms? Which ones do I use? Which ones have I had problems with? Which ones do I trust? So, this is somewhat of a deep rabbit hole, and for the sake of brevity, uh, to try and keep this quick, I'm only going to go over just a couple things and kind of explain my thought process on it. I've been shooting for quite some time, taking most of my training extremely serious, and I've also been here for most of the snake oil. I've been here for a lot of the, the S15s of and the ETS mags of the industry as well. So I think a lot of the things in the last five years that I've tried have been maybe not proven, but mostly tested, not only by myself, but by the industry. And I'll kind of go over some of those things right now. I'm gonna start primarily with handguns because I think a lot of people see them as a pain point when it comes to training. Outside of most things using Glock mags, the starting point for a lot of these handgun magazines, just pricing. The prices of some of these metal mags can be anywhere from 50 up to 70 to 90 dollars. A lot of things use Glock mags and I understand that there's a huge different amount of products available for Glock magazines. What I personally choose to run are standard OEM magazines. So just the standard Glock 17, magazine and then again with a plus two base extension. So I have had a couple failures or malfunctions with these. The main difference is compared to something like a PMAG, compared to something like uh, maybe an ETS magazine. Some of these brand new out of the packages, I've had failures. Failures to feed, failures to extract, double feeds, weird like type three malfunctions where you've got multiple loose rounds stuck in the chamber, uh, double stacking stove piping rounds. And that's primarily why I choose to steer clear of the aftermarket solutions. Now, yes, I'm aware there are gigantic, this is a 40 round ETS magazine for a nine mil uh, Glock platform and those are like $15. You're not going to really be able to match that with something like one of these uh, Even if you get an extension, this is a uh, OEM 33 round Glock mag send nudes You can get one of these for 35 to 40 dollars or you can get four of these Well, these aren't going to be nearly as reliable. They do make them in different, you know, 140 mil compatible sizes so that you can run them in competitions. I would say steer clear of Magpul, steer clear of ETS, steer clear of Hex Mag for handguns. If you're going to purchase an OEM magazine, you will have to spend more money, save, buy bulk, look for discounts, look for trusted websites that have sales. There's ways to save money. If you can't afford to do 33 round stick mags, and you wanna go the route of adding a base extension. I've tried a bunch from just a ridiculous amount of manufacturers. This is a Terran, Terran Tactical base pad on a Glock 19 magazine. This is a Shield Arms on a Glock 17 magazine. This is a Jaegerworks Plus 5. I've tried a lot of different base pads. The Zev Plastic extensions. These are the SLR Rifle Works magazine extensions. And Glock also makes a 24 round, 140 mil compatible uh, stock magazine. So the main reason that I would warn people to be careful of aftermarket stuff is unless you try multiple of these products, unless you test them, vet them, run them in all of your platforms, run them in PCCs if you have a pistol caliber carbine. Yes, I'm aware some of these products are not available for every single brand or every single type of firearm. You might be limited by what type of firearm you own, your state, whether or not you're allowed to or can have magazine extensions. There are ways to get very large magazines. This is a standard OEM Glock 33 round mag with a plus 10 Terran base pad. So you can you can get a lot of firepower. I hear that the Magpul ones are acceptable and they feed a little bit better, but things like this, you're basically kind of throwing away $70. And even when it comes to OEM magazines, you still have to be careful. I've tried a couple of these 
Chris Vector base pad extensions. These are on Glock 17 magazines. I got them in Alpine white because I thought it looked cool. As you can see, big oof. This did not run very well. I had a bunch of extraction issues. I bought three of these. One of them would not load in a Glock 17, a Glock 45, or a 9mm PCC. One of them ran fine and the other one shit the bed. The bottom of the base pad shot out and all of the rounds went flying out. So be wary of the companies that you're purchasing from even if they're a known good brand just vet your stuff test it don't just put all of your faith and then you know maybe not carry something like this but if you're carrying a magazine please test it i've seen more issues failure to feeds failures to extract i've seen more issues with magpul uh, pistol magazines than anything, but your mileage may vary. I'm probably rolling some footage of it right now. The only time I've personally experienced issues with OEM Glock mags are on extremely old uh, Glock 17 mags that I've had for like five or six years that I've shot thousands of rounds. They were my primary training magazines. They remained loaded for very long periods of time and they were shot and then reloaded hundreds of times, 500 rounds a week sometimes between five mags. So there was a lot of wear and tear put on the springs. I gut and changed out the springs, same follower, same base pad, and they all run perfectly fine now. So things like that, maintenance on your springs, cleaning, those will help uh, ensure reliability, oiling your springs cleaning your magazines if they get ditched into the dirt quite a bit. You should shake off dirt, uh, but that's, that's neither here nor there. I've also tried KCI stick magazines. These kind of work, but they're not the most reliable. Again, they are much cheaper, but for things like this, UTG, there's a reason why people call it useless tactical gear. This, you know, the three of these that I bought is the price of one standard OEM Glock 33 round magazine. Most of these don't cycle in all my pistols where one OEM Glock 33 mag works completely fine. So did you actually save any money? Did you actually get something out of your investment? Whatever you're, again, I hate to stress this, but I've tried a lot of different products. Some of them really are snake oil. They just don't work as advertised or you, you're inducing a bunch of malfunctions. So think about it, use other reviews, other videos, other people's suggestions. If you really, really, you know, you like the look of this, maybe get one, but be aware of what might happen or what might be some issues that are popping up on the range. I use these mainly for malfunction training because I know they're going to misbehave. I use Cellier and Below s and ammo, which is the worst ammo I've ever shot. I use that ammo in conjunction with these TS mags, and I can guarantee that within the first 15 rounds, I'm going to have some type of malfunction. It's kind of great. If I want to run malfunction clearances, that's how I force them, essentially. So, again, your mileage may vary. Pick proven products and then go out there and test them. Test them with different types of ammo and just avoid steel cased ammo because it doesn't matter if it's an OEM Glock or not, you're probably going to have a bunch of issues if you load something like that up with steel cased ammo. Okay, now I kind of want to address a couple rifle. Again, this is going to be primarily Glock magazines and AR-15 magazines. I'm sorry that I'm not covering weird shit like 308s and 50 cals and all sorts of AK mags and stuff like that. You'll have to find somebody else if those are the things that you're after a review or uh, suggestions about. Much like with the handgun magazines, I've tried just a whole, just a crazy amount of rifle mags as well. Uh, I think there are pluses, minuses, upsides, downsides, uh, characteristics that are completely different depending on your application and what you're doing. Most people will say get XYZ mag or get uh, aluminum or steel or this. It doesn't matter really what you're using as again as long as you are vetting and making sure that it runs reliably in your firearm. I would say a go-to for a lot of people are these polymer mags. Um, these are some hex mags. They're decent for the price. They're usually around the 15 to 20 dollar range. I've not experienced a lot of issues with them. They have a interesting pattern on them that you can put pre-cut grip tape into if you want a little bit more. They're polymer, so you could also stipple them. They have different colors. They're nice. They're not my favorite polymer magazine, but they are they are completely serviceable. As well as your standard P mag or E mag. These are uh, this is a Gen 2 and a Gen 3 non-windowed P mag. They also come in 10 and 20 round magazine sizes. You can get these uh, little 
feed lip protectors. I'd say the P mag has become the industry standard. I personally like the E mags better than the P mags, but they're extremely expensive and you can get a 10 pack of P mags for roughly you know, a hundred, hundred and twenty dollars. So they're reasonably priced for the most part, as long as you take care of them, they will run. I've had some of these P mags for going on eight years, most of which I've never had any issues with followers binding with the problems with retention or anything though on some of the older ones they do struggle when I get like 25 26 rounds they do struggle pushing the follower up that just means you need a new magazine that's not the mag's fault it is literally a spring wearing out so P mags are a great option for polymer as well and then I think really in the last five or six years kind of the goat or the greatest uh, option the best of both worlds has been these Lancers they make super sick different colorways. You can get them with plus five magazine extensions, all sorts of uh, cool colors, translucent filled material. They've got a steel feed lip, reinforced feed lip polymer body and you, you know, plastic base plate. So a standard magazine is a 30 round magazine, standard capacity. For the Lancers, they're actually built for 31, so you can download one round and be one under. So instead of doing the John Lovell, putting 29 in a 30, you're actually putting 30 in a 31. You could squeeze that final 31st round on there if you really want to, but inserting it on a closed bolt sometimes can be difficult. I personally just say run 30 in them. They work completely fine. So that's pretty much it for the polymer mags that I would recommend. Uh, I would say Lancers are kind of my favorite, then the E mags, then P mags, then the hex mags. Now, when it comes to metal magazines, there's a couple options in this. Unfortunately, as of last year, we lost one of our, you know, the, the actual goat of magazines with Surefeed. This is one of my very old 20 round Surefeed okay industry sure feed magazines uh these guys really they're the gold standard for a metal magazine what i will say to you is if you're in a local gun store you see 20 or 30 round standard capacity ar-15 magazines that are made by okay industries slash sure feed i would suggest purchasing all of them uh, if they're you know enclosed brand new and they're plastic and stuff them somewhere where they're not going to get destroyed and hang on to them because they're arguably one of the best magazines on the market or that used to be on the market. And you've also got Duramag. So Duramag, very similarly, also makes aluminum or steel bodied 30 round, 20 round, and 10 round AR-15 magazines. I think the main reason that I appreciate these um, metal magazines, as I said before, there are pros and cons to every type of magazine. There are pros and cons to a lot of different products. Aluminum and steel bodied magazines are better at retaining, uh, you know, their durability when exposed to extreme temperatures. Usually they're cheaper. They also have, you know, new Magpul follower technology. They don't bind as bad. Uh, they're more, again, they're more durable. They actually slide in and out of certain Kydex inserts in magazine holders or dedicated pistol pouches a lot easier. And they look fucking cool. Once they start getting worn in, fucking awesome. The Boba Fett effect is a real thing, and if you if you disagree, that's fine. You don't have to agree with me, but you're fucking wrong. So. <clears throat> While, yes, modern uh, injection molding, modern nylon reinforced plastics are extremely durable. People have shot half a million rounds out of a Glock with no frame issues or cracking or malfunctions or whatever. There's always going to be the additional or added care necessary or, or an additional layer of attention that's going to be needed when dealing with plastic, complete plastic magazines like the Magpuls, the Hex Mags, things that aren't reinforced. You're gonna have to check your feed lips. You might have to download you know a single round or potentially if you're you know inserting on a closed bolt you might have to worry about damage to the feed lips so these are just things to consider and much much like i showed there are ways terran tactical makes a plus five base extension for p mags as does I believe shield arms i showed this previously but this is the plus five for lancer mags there are 40 round p mags there's uh 50 round drums 100 round beta mags what i personally would recommend is 
picking up OEM manufacturer uh, suggested magazines for whatever your handgun or pistols. And then when it comes to AR-15 platform or long guns, try whatever fits in your firearm. But these are a couple options that I've had very good luck with over the last, again, eight, nine years. So... Alright guys, I just wanted to quickly go over a couple options for magazine selection. If I miss something or if there's something I like glaringly overlook, please let me know in the comments section. Also, my social media, Instagram, Discord, links are in the description. If you like the video, like it. If you didn't like it, well that's fine too. Subscribe if you're interested. And yeah, that's pretty much it for today guys. Alright, be safe out there. Drink water, wear a condom. Call your mom. Peace. And if your mom's not with us, call your dad. If your dad's not with us, tell somebody you love them. Don't be a dickhead.